Good evening, folks. You guessed it. Time for another bale. We'll get this thing on. And, uh, then we'll go from there. Just about done with round bale feeding for the season. Uh, this one and well, maybe one more. Um, we'll have to see how fast the pastures grow up, um, and then uh, then we're pretty much done. I mean, we always pretty much. Whoops! Not very straight, was I? You know, we always pretty much feed them there we can close that um, it depends on the pastures but uh, every night any time of the year we pretty much feed a couple of chunks of hay because they need a little bit of roughage to help them digest uh, you know that green grass from the pastures just isn't good for them to, to be their only diet so uh, huh. there's a chicken out where are my wife's out here <laughs> I wonder if she knows that. Where is she? There's a chicken out. Well, I guess I'll have to tell her that she's got a chicken that broke out of Alcatraz because I have to go feed this bale. So, let's see. Yep. Yeah. She knows. <laughs> uh, usually it's funny. If they do get out, they just want to get back in most of the time. Uh, stand by. Yeah, I do. <clears throat> I got a couple of pallets to pick up. her home check for strings get out here in the daylight I can see it a little better I still don't see any strings so off we go So, I'm going to tell you a quick story. It's like story time in the cab, you know, there's nothing else to do. Um, <laughs> when you bury invisible dog fence like 12 years ago, I think, I think Maddie, our beagle, I think she'd have been about 12 now. Uh, it's, uh... It's awful when you don't remember exactly where you buried that stuff. And then you go digging a couple of nuisance saplings, locust trees. Them things are, God, they're like the devil's own because they grow so fast and they 
spread just like wildfire. Um, so last week I told you we were going away and that night after I got back from uh, feeding that bale, we were playing around, getting excited, you know it's nice weather. You start thinking about things that you know you want to get done. And uh, I started digging up a couple locust saplings in a few spots. Well, one, two, three, three spots. And then there was a four spot that was a possibility where I broke the wire, where I was leveling out for the small red chicken house to go. Because in a couple of weeks, we're getting a new big condominium for these chickens. Uh, I think it's a 10 by... 14 and uh, I so I couldn't you know I didn't I didn't think I thought the wire went the other side of this batch of locust trees but apparently we went right straight through the middle of them and uh, the night before we went to Charlotte um, we were frantically trying to figure out where I broke it, it's easy, you know, it, it's just wires. It's not hard to put it back together with a butt connector, you know. But we were frantically looking because while we were gone, my mother-in-law was gonna come down and take care of the dogs. And it's nice to be able to let them go out and not worry about them running out into the road or whatever. So, we didn't find it. Turns out it was cold here while we were gone. It was beautiful down there, by the way. So, we brought the weather back with us. So, everybody ought to be happy about that. But, uh, so, it turns out it was cold. And Dixie is not a cold weather dog at all. So, it turned out to be no big deal. My mother-in-law just basically came down, let her out a few times a day, fed her in the morning, fed her in the evening, let her out, checked on the chickens and the eggs and whatnot. And, uh, but by the time she was done checking on the chicken eggs and chickens, you know, Dixie was ready to go back in. So, we went down to Charlotte, had a great weekend. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever been there, but what they call Uptown Charlotte, that's got to be the cleanest city I've ever been to. Uh, I don't think I ever saw a cigarette butt or a gum wrapper, anything on the sidewalks. But uh, it's a very expensive city to eat, to go out to restaurants. But it was nice. We had a good time. And we went on a historical haunted tour. Uh, apparently, there's a lot of haunted history in Charlotte. And uh, so we, we went on that Friday evening. It was a good time. And uh, we got back. Sunday evening we all had Monday off because I wasn't sure what time we were leaving Sunday what time we were getting home Sunday night so we all just had well Emma had the day off from school anyway for a unused snow day and so Monday I started looking again for the broken wire and of course, I was looking in the wrong spot. I did buy one of those underground uh, cable detectors, um, but it worked. But it, you know, I bought an eighty-dollar one. I didn't buy a three hundred-dollar one, so like it didn't measure the depth of the wire and the exact location of the wire. So I, I found traced where the wire went, and I was looking. But I was looking in the wrong area, come to find out. So I just happened 
to go over to this one locust sapling and I brushed maybe a, a tablespoon of dirt away and I could see the green wire and had that was the last place I looked the night before we left and we just got we got we were getting frustrated and sometimes it's best just to walk away but it was dark now or just about dark so but if I had given that 15 more seconds in that last spot when I was looking there I would have found that uh, that night but you know like I said we were tired we were getting frustrated uh, yeah, I still had to put all the luggage and stuff in the truck because we drove down. And uh, in the end, now I found it. The fence is fixed and uh, everything's good to go, but it's just it's frustrating. Um, so, anyway, stay tuned. We'll get this battle in there. You guys listen to me ramble enough about being old and not remembering things and this. Stay tuned. There. Got the gate open. I think I'll stick you guys. Yeah, right about here. You'll get a pretty good show. I got to drag this thing over here, though. Because, see, this is what I'm talking about. The horses, you know, they'll, they'll shove this feeder all the way. Right? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. They'll, they'll slide this thing all the way, right out of their way. And, uh, and then they do a pretty good job of cleaning up. Um, not bad anyway. Better than expected sometimes. And sometimes not, but it'll all end up in the compost pile and then we'll, uh, We'll get it from there. Yeah. Let's shove this one back a little bit. There. They they shove it out of the way and they do a pretty fair job of cleaning up. Oh wait. I better lock in the four-wheel peel. Yep, yep, that's a necessity. This stuff is greasy. <clears throat> and then we cut the string. I know, I cut every one of them and you really shouldn't have to, in theory. If you can find the end, you should be able to unravel this thing. I mean, when the baler's doing it, it's just one long string going round and round. Look at these two sorry sacks looking at me like I'm supposed to hurry up because they're starved to death. But I don't know how much hay they actually had today to get through the day because my wife was running late. She didn't come up and check the feeder, which makes no difference. It's not like I feed before I go to work, but she could have thrown them a square bale to get them through the day. But she asked my father-in-law to check and he said, oh no, there's plenty of hay. <laughs> I think next time he's going to have to get out of his easy chair to take a better look. Because when I got home from work, there wasn't anything here, and I could tell 
that there hadn't been anything here all day. Just by the way they were acting and the way the way this barnyard looked I could tell that there wasn't anything there all day. So they may actually be hungry. So Boy, it's hard to steer in this poop. Oh, you nasty little bale. What did you do that for to me? Well, you know what Cole Sonny says, sometimes they just don't like to come off the spear and they need a little persuasion. Oh yeah, let me not forget to put the gate back on the feeder like I did the one night, but that night I got away with it because we had them locked off for the night. Tonight, hey. What in the world? She's like five years old. Might be getting a little tweaked. All right. Let me pick you guys back up. And then, come on, Chubbo. You got to go around the gate, man. Yep. Follow the leader, Cheyenne. Oh, Jake. You always got to pass gas when you walk past me, man. And we'll open this back up. Whew. We got to put a real post in here. Um... Long story short, we used to have a spring gate that we would close here, and it worked very well. And then somebody, not us, started taking Jake outside of the barnyard and introduced him to the grass is greener on the other side of the fence theory. And then he started getting out, and he figured out that that little spring gate did not have electricity in it. Prior to that, they left it alone. So this year we had to start swinging the gate all the way around and it's, you know, a locust post really isn't designed to have a big gate on it. So we're gonna, we're gonna drill a hole and sink a big post down in there and then uh, re rehang the gate. So, well, anyway. The horses are content. They'll fight like husband and wife for about the first 10 minutes, and then they'll finally both settle in on a spot on the bale where they're content. Jake, he doesn't treat her very well, but he's not a very nice boy to her, and I don't understand why, but every once in a while, she's had enough of him, and she gives it back to him, and he don't like it, and then he runs away from her like a little scared kitten. So... All right, stay tuned. And the spring-fed water tub is still running like Niagara Falls. That's a good feeling. And uh, with the forecast for the next at least week and a half, two weeks, there's no reason why that won't continue to run. I really got to get that subsoiler down here in the potato field, but it's got to dry up just a little bit. Not a lot. I don't want it to dry all the way out, but I want it to dry up enough where I can get traction. That's it. 
another story time in the cab uh talking about getting old and forgetting things so we'll see you in the next video i appreciate everybody watching and thank you very much